your worship band should be using in-ears. Now, in this video, I wanna share six reasons that I have that I think your worship band should be using in-ears. Now, in last week's episode of Behind the Space Bar, it's a podcast I release every Monday at 10 a.m. Central, uh, I talked about why your band should use in-ears, but I thought it'd be great to do a video specifically talking about why your worship band should use in-ears. So if you're watching this, you're not a worship leader, not a musician that plays in church, check the link in the description of this video and watch the why your band should use in-ears. That's still great content and it's geared more for a general audience and general market. But let's talk as worship leaders, as musicians that play at churches, why should we use in-ears? We, we go to churches, we see people using in-ears all the time. We get told we should do it, but then we've got to go spend money to buy them. Why is it worth the effort? Well, again, in this video, I want to share six reasons really quickly why I think your worship band should use in-ears on stage. Number one, you can give everyone their own separate mix. Now, um, in almost every church scenario that I've ever led worship in, before we used in-ears, we all had floor wedges on stage. And floor wedges, if you're not familiar, uh, if you're a, a youngin, a young kid, you may not even know what floor wedges are, but it's essentially speakers that sit on the ground that point back up towards you. And uh, the problem with floor wedges were, is as a worship leader, uh, and I remember this story very vivid, vividly as if it was yesterday, uh, sharing a floor wedge with two other singers. I was leading worship, singing, playing electric guitar, and we had two other singers. Uh, and we're all sharing one floor wedge. Well, what happened? I'm playing guitar, and in order to compete with my guitar volume, we had to turn that floor wedge up more. I had to turn my vocal up because I'm the worship leader. I've got to hear myself, right? I'm in charge. But then the vocalist couldn't hear themselves, so they needed more of them. But then their vocal got so loud, I couldn't hear myself, so I needed more of me. And by the end, what happened, everyone was mad, angry, and there was feedback everywhere. When we use in-ears, everyone can have their own separate mix. And so as a worship leader, you can have a mix that is custom tailored to fit your needs. Singers can have uh, mixes that are custom tailored to fix that fit their needs. They help them blend together. They help them stay uh, on pitch and on time. Wouldn't that be a miracle? Drummers can uh, protect their hearing instead of uh, being behind a drum shield and getting all that splash back into them and putting a, a, a monitor floor wedge next to them that makes it even louder and it destroys their they're hearing even more, um, uh, they can have in-ears to hear a custom mix of just what they need. So the ability to have that for each band member is in, in incredibly convenient. And you could set it up to whether uh, either each band member mixes their own ears or even better yet, you have someone that's a trained professional mix their ears for them at front of house or can uh, you know dial into their system with like a digital uh, audio labs uh, live mix and help kind of consult them and help them with their mix, which is super helpful. The number two reason specifically that I think uh, worship bands uh, and worship leaders should be using in-ears on stage is it reduces stage volume. So having those floor wedges, I mean, the example I just gave of me leading worship, playing guitar, uh, I've got vocals blaring at me to compete with my guitar amp. I've got my guitar amp turned up loud enough so that I can hear it. Well, when we're using in-ears, you could take your guitar amp, put it off stage, put it in a, uh, a room, pro tip, uh, don't put it in a room near the nursery or they'll get very angry and the kids will get angry, which in turn make the the uh, volunteers angry. Don't do that. I've learned that lesson the hard way, but move your amp uh, off to the side of the stage, mic it up, and then you can have the best guitar tone of your life. Your amp will be as loud as you possibly need it to be, but you're using in-ears, so you get your own customized mix like we talked about before this, but the stage volume on the stage has now gone down because the guitar amps are gone, and we've taken those floor wedges away that we're trying to compete with the guitar amps and trying to manage mixes for three different people. So the stage volume is greatly reduced, which in turn allows the front of house audio engineer to create a better mix. It allows you to manage volume better because now the front of house engineer is mixing to the drums uh, and trying to match the drum volume as opposed to drum plus wedge volume, which typically just means you turn the front of house off and listen to the monitors and maybe supplement with some vocals every now and again. It's going to make a better experience for the people in the congregation congregation, uh, having the stage volume down, uh, and in turn, it's going to be a better experience for the members of the band and vocalists on stage. Uh, the third reason why your band needs to use in-ears is so that you can use click. This opens up a world of possibilities if you're using click. And we're going to talk, believe in a few weeks, um, on Wednesdays, 10 a.m. Central, 
in this video series about why your band should use click but uh using click keeps your band tight keeps your band together takes the weight off the drummer's uh, shoulders so that they're not the one carrying the weight particularly during transitions and we'll talk about that in a moment uh, but it gives your your band something that can reference my buddy of mine david always said click don't lie it is a it is a reference point click is the gospel it's the thing that when it's at 72 we all got to be at 72 as a guitar player i can lock my delay pedals into that and i know it's going to be consistent but i can only use click if i'm using in-ears you can't use click if you're using floor wedges um, and everyone in your band should be using in-ears so that everyone can hear click so they can all be together so that number four reason that your band should your worship band should use in-ears is that you can improve your transitions um i, I want to take you back or maybe this is the world you're currently living in uh before in-ears before click when we used to transition between songs and we would you know maybe trash can a song and we want to start a low song that starts with pad and what would you hear or hi-hat ch, 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 from the drummer starting it off and then keeping time all throughout this low section that should be ambient and should have space and should be a really nice moment is ruined by the drummer trying to keep time. And it's not the drummer's fault. The drummer's not ruined it being a drummer. The drummer's doing their job. Uh, it's ruined because they have to have something to keep time and we have to have something so that we all start together. But if we're using in-ears, we can use click. And if we're using click, then we can improve our transitions. No more drummer counting in because we're using click. We just hear one, two, three, four, and we can go. Um, we can start with just pad because we hear one, two, three, four, pad goes. Uh, we can use guide cues so that our band stays in sync and in the same place at the same time. So we can hear one, two, three, four, verse two, three, four, and vocalists start right on time. Uh, what's really, really nice, we can have a pitch reference to start a song. So if you want to start a song acapella, or maybe it's starting with pad and the vocalist feels a little uncomfortable. He's not uh, fully confident as to the starting pitch without singing with other people. Then just in their ears, but dun, and they'll hear that starting pitch and they can step away from the mic and go, uh, and then start singing and they'll be like they're uh, the world's best singer, which is super great. Number five reason that your worship band should use uh, in-ears on stage is you can play tighter. Why can you play tighter? Because you can hear each other for the first time ever. The bass player can actually hear the drummer's kick. The rhythm guitarist can actually hear when the drummer is building so that uh, instead of just playing this high lead line, they can play rhythm and palm mute and build with the drummer so that the band can play together. As opposed to each musician playing in their own little selfish pod with a wedge where they can only hear themselves and they're all about more of me and turning their volume up. Instead of that, everyone can hear each other and they're playing together. If you want your worship band to play together and to sound like a band as opposed to individual musicians on stage playing at the same time, you need to use in-ears. And then number six, the final reason uh, that your worship band should use in-ears is it allows you to sound like the original recording. How in the world does using in-ears allow you to sound like the original recording? Well, we already talked about using in-ears allows you to use click and using in-ears and click allows you to use and run tracks. And if you're running tracks, then you can add additional sounds that will improve the sound of your band, additional sounds that were found on the original record. You can even play along with the original musicians from the original record if you have the original master uh, multi-tracks. You could perform on stage with those, hear the click in your ears so you stay together. And the experience for the congregation is amazing because it sounds just like the song does on the record. They can relate to it. They can quickly go, oh, I know this song. They're excited to sing it. And it helps make it more fun. Again, going back to the previous one, it makes it more fun for the band on stage, the vocalists on stage to sing to because they have something to play with. And they're not just playing with click. They're not playing with tracks or not playing two tracks and two click. They're playing with it. It's a part of what's happening. So those are six quick reasons why I think your worship band should be using in-ears. I'd love to hear from you though in the comments. What to you is the biggest benefit uh, for your worship band, your worship team uh, to use in-ears? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Now, I just put together a free utility, a free tool that helps you figure out what app you should use to run tracks on stage. If you're a worship leader, you want to run tracks on stage, you use Playback Prime, um, uh, Ableton Live, What's the best thing for you? To make it easy to figure that out, I put together a free web website. You can find it by going to multitracks.app. And when you go there, you're going to see a free quiz that you can take. I'll ask you a few questions. And based on what answers you have to those questions, um, I will tell you exactly 
what app you should use for multitracks. It's a pretty cool utility and it's going to take out the guesswork and it's going to make it super simple for you. In addition to that, I did a video a couple weeks ago where I compared Playback Prime and Ableton. It's a very in-depth walkthrough. Well, I include all of the research, all the the, the um, content that I use to create that uh, video um, when you go to multitracks.app as well too. And finally, I create content just like this every single Wednesday, 10 a.m. Central. Uh, and so if you're wanting some worship-focused content, content that's focused on worship leaders and using technology, using tracks on stage, then I want to encourage you to hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when I post new content. And you could be one of the first people in the entire world to see that go live at 10 a.m. Central. And if you miss it on Wednesday, it's always on demand. You can view it. But I post new content every single day. So Monday through Sunday, there's new content two podcasts that post every single week and five new tutorials that go live every single week. So if you are a worship leader, you want to stay uh, up on the latest trends and know exactly what's going on and the best thing to do, uh, the best approach to take to use technology on stage, uh, then hit subscribe, hit the bell icon again so you're notified when I go live. Thanks so much for watching uh, this tutorial, this video. Hope to see you tomorrow and hope to see you next Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central for our next uh, worship-focused tutorial. Take care, everybody. Bye.